love to praise him. Titus chapter 3 verses 8 through 15 Titus chapter 3 verses 8 through 15 and we will read them together as we usually do Titus chapter 3 verse 8 This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject, knowing that he is such is perverted and sinned, being condemned of himself. When I shall send Artemis unto thee, O Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me, to Nicopolis, for I have determined there to wonder. Bring Zenos the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be warning unto them. And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. All that are with me salute thee. Greet them that love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. Now I'm going to submit to you that if you follow Paul's instruction, a lot of things you'll leave alone. If we will spend our time 
believing. All right. We won't fool around with foolish questions. Wow. A foolish question doesn't have a place when you're believing. Strivings about the law. For it says here in verse 9 that they're unprofitable. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to submit to you that those who believe know that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but it's just in natural things. How much time do you spend with unprofitable endeavors. It's not very wise if you know something to be unprofitable for you to devote any time to it. So there are some things that we that, that the apostle urges us or admonishes us to avoid certain things but a lot of that knowledge comes with the knowledge of God. I love it. And so some people may not get to God mm. in their pursuit unless they realize that there's some foolish uh, genealogies and, 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 and her, heretical kinds of things. Mm. That's how they get to God. They come that way. But once we've come to God and we believe in God, now you, you, you look and see what your choices are. Because the choice is simply to believe or not believe. And I must admit to you that it ceases to be a struggle. It ceases to be a struggle. It becomes quite clear. And so when 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 these things, these things that Paul has written, they're necessary. There are people that will not would their eyes will not open until they read these things. But let's remember who he's really writing to. He's writing to people who have had their eyes opened. Opened. See, when we look at a verse of scripture like, seek ye first the kingdom of God, whenever that verse hits home, there's no seeking anything else. I mean, let's think about it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Well, I, I, I'm seeking the kingdom of God. How big is the kingdom of God? How much time do I need to finally find it? In its, in its entirety. When do I stop seeking? So there's a, there's a thing about, uh, there's a thing about believing. I mean, you, 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 you look down through the gospel. People ran into Jesus. They believed, and it's like they disappeared. It's like they disappeared. They all believe. And, and it's the same with all of us. And, and the thing that's so missing, so missing in our society, is people seeing believers believe. Amen. Amen. Oh, you can go anywhere and see unbelief. Unbelief will sit you down and give you and, and, and have a 15 minute conversation with you. But the key to this whole uh, this whole thing is believing. I mean, you look at any of these things down here that he's talking about: heretics, subversion. You aren't you aren't you aren't subverted believing. And 
And so, and so I, I, I encourage us all to look at what all of these writers have pointed out to us. Because our call is not to be scholars. Our call is to be believers. Period. So as we as, as, as we look at these scriptures, just remember, I can't avoid foolish questions if I'm if, if I'm not believing. All questions are foolish if I'm not believing. And so I would encourage all of us that those of us who have chosen to believe God, that's what we have. That's what we have, that precious choice that above whatever life brings, I've made a decision to believe God. My Lord. And so at, at a moment of question, I've got an answer. At any moment of question, I have an answer. I believe. Amen. Amen. I believe. You know, we, 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 in, in our, in our uh, two seven group, we're memorizing the verse about assurance of victory. But think about it. There's a way of escape. Now, what's my choice? Isn't it simple? Look for the way of escape. Believe God. And so all, that's all that that Paul is is encouraging Titus in this writing. And I pray that I pray that you will allow your faith to take you where you see how critical it is. Mm. Don't get caught up in complications. Keep it simple. Lean out to your own understanding. Trust and believe God. Thank you for your attention. something we need never forget. simply say that here my brother shed thorny. All the children of God said amen. 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 amen.
It is indeed a blessing and a joyous occasion to come and share. Amen. On the last Sunday of the year of 2013. Amen. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. I, I've been overjoyed and, and I've been preaching to myself all week. Amen. 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 Because I know that 2014 will produce better things than 2013. Amen. 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 I know this. I I know this. Yeah, we're going to have ups and downs. We're going to have trials and tribulations, but yet it's still the same God that brought us through 2013. Amen. It's the same God that will bring us through 2014. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. Something I was told early on in my ministry that don't ever be ashamed nor afraid to proclaim the same message more than once just in case people didn't get it the first time. Matthew chapter 9 verses 35 through 38 and it reads, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. 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 I'm going to talk <coughs> from an encouraging thought. The Lord isn't blind. The Lord isn't blind. When it comes to the labor field of ministry, we have to realize that Satan always has people strategically placed to deter and prevent you from doing what God has instructed you to do. All right. Amen. And so when his people decide to rise up against you, it's then that God himself will rise up to protect you. Amen. 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 In, in, in the labor field of ministry, that I come to learn that secular success will produce spiritual fools. Secular success will produce spiritual fools. And, and one thing about it, in the life and ministry of Jesus, people in his day often miss the message for trying to discredit the messenger. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not this a Nazarene? How is he going to tell us of him being before Abraham? The people of Jesus' day often miss the message by trying to discredit the messenger. Well, although I read Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38, we have to realize that it's also recorded in Mark chapter 6, verses 33 through 34, and Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. For the, Gal the gospel of Matthew summarizes the Galilean ministry of Jesus and introduces the great commission he gave to his disciples. The observation that they were scattered as sheep having no shepherd constitute one of the great missionary passages of the New Testament. For Jesus pictures the world as a great harvest in need of laborers to gather it into the storehouse. My brothers and sisters said, in the labor field of ministry, there will never be a layoff. In the labor field of ministry, there is always room for more people to be added and joined for the cause of kingdom building. Yeah. In the labor field of ministry, you're needed on a daily basis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen, amen. Matthew 9, the Lord saw, past tense, is a result of the Lord first siege, present tense. Before the Lord saw, he first siege. Mm -hmm. And there is a distinction between spiritual evil and physical illness, which occurs within any congregation. Jesus is seen in the sense and essence of his human weaknesses. 
fully sensing the ravaged condition of human brokenness. True compassion is only found in the nature of God. And my brothers and sisters, because God alone knows the full depth of our individual pain, our needs and suffering, God sees, mm -hmm. God hears, mm -hmm. God cares, right. and God understands what we're faced with. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people that in this world, they seek out to pick on people that they feel that they can overpower, right. yeah, yeah. that they can overthrow. But I want to tell you something. God is much bigger than your giants. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. I don't care. What kind of wicked schemes, tactics that people may use, God is bigger than your giants. Mm -hmm. The house of the wicked mm -hmm. shall be overthrown, right. but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. <coughs> that is recorded in Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 11. For the reason why the house of the wicked shall be overthrown, because God will not allow his people to suffer at the hands of their adversaries. Satan want to stop you, but God is wanting you to keep going, keep growing, keep studying the word that you may be an example to someone of how you made it through. Every trial, every test, every temptation that you encounter produces a triumph. The Lord, he brought me through that. He's able to bring me through this. He made a way out of no way. He's able to make another way. The God I serve has never failed me. Amen. That's the reason why he say the house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. Why? Because we are his example. We are his ambassadors to promote his kingdom agenda that Jesus is the reason that we are living this life. Because he died, he, he, he was buried, and he was resurrected in order to save us from our sins. For the compassion of Christ, my brothers and sisters, should flow through every believer mm -hmm. to care for and serve others. Mm -hmm. Not for people to serve us, but for us to seek an opportunity to serve people. Christ's likeness summons us to learn Jesus' heart of compassion. Yeah, yeah. To acquire a depth of sensitivity that can be worked in us through the Holy Spirit. By reconditioning our hearts to be able to sense the pain of human bondage. Mm -hmm and to weep with those who weep. Mm -hmm. Compassion sees beyond the immediate and personal to convey love and kindness to the lost, to the hurting, to the needy, to the downtrodden, to the distraught, mm -hmm. to the distressed. For our compassion should cause us to maneuver with love as our mission and ministry. Yes, Amen. Amen. Love, love as our mission and ministry. I'm not doing this for you to do something for me, but because I love God. And I know what the Lord has done for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm willing to demonstrate that same love to you as well. Here in Matthew chapter 9, my brothers and sisters, verses 35 through 38, Jesus is preparing his disciples for evangelistic outreach to reach a world in dire need of preaching, teaching, and ministry. When we choose to do it our way, it's then we're destined to fail. No other way or course to reach lost souls to Christ than his way. God has provided us with the blueprint, with the road map, with the course syllabus to effective and efficient evangelize. And sheep having no shepherd, that means they're aimlessly wandering with no direction or guidance. And when people are aimlessly wandering with no direction or guidance, it leaves room for the adversary, the devil, to come in with trickery and deception and manipulation, but we ought to thank God that he's never left us nor forsaken us, that he's there even when we don't call upon him, when we're not praying to him. He's still watching over us. Don't you see? He sees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then it's sheepfold. Amen. As I had the opportunity to, to share in the first district board meeting on yesterday, I let them know that in a congregation, you will have three classes of people. You will have sheep, you will have goats, and you will have wolves. But I, I told them I thank God for, for my ministerial outlook that I've been chasing goat and wolves 
Amen. For 21 years to let them know it's about the Lord and not about you. Yeah. Not about me. It's about the Lord. My brothers and sisters, for we can't lead ourselves, but we must constantly seek the presence, the protection and provisions of God in order to effectively evangelize a world crippled and stifled by the strength of sin and passion. Mm. The devil desires for us to rely on ourselves, thus making the power of God to be reduced as ineffective and unproductive. God loves the sinner. But he despises the sin. Another encouraging verse, my brother and sister, Proverbs 15 and 3, For the eyes of the Lord is in every place, beholding the evil and the good. You know, you will encounter people that believe that they're smart enough to isolate God. <laughs> Amen. People think that they're slick enough to outsmart outsmart God, but how can you outsmart a person that's everywhere watching everything? He knows what you're doing. He knows what you're not doing. And the moment you become exposed and exploited, then you become offended. Rather than humble yourself and repent of your wicked deeds, you want to find every excuse. You know why it's hard to reach some people? Because they confabulate with people of like-mindedness. So if you're dealing with people that's full of lies, deception, manipulation, and all of this stuff, it's because they are, are interacting with people that are like-minded. And so in order to get to that person, you have to get to the source that's fueling their ego. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In, in, in the labor field of ministry, you know, you'll encounter something, anything. But that's the reason why the Lord said, Behold, I send you forth as sheep among wolves, but be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. Yeah. Why? Because this world is marked and marred by success. Mm -hmm. But I must raise the question, what have you done for God lately? Mm -hmm. Should penetrate the crevice of our soul to generate a momentum yeah. to do yeah. something for God. When was the last time you visited the city? Mm -hmm. When was the last time you, you fed the hungry? When was the last time you clothed the naked? Are right. you available for God to use you in evangelistic outreach? Mm. Do you desire for God to mm. use you in a world needed to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord? What are you willing to do that you haven't done in 2013? Mm. Nah, nah, nah. Going into 2014, what are you willing to do? Are you willing to sacrifice it all and say, you know, Lord, I want to be more ministry-minded mm. in order to help reach advanced people that may not be reached any other way. Yeah. On your job, do you use that opportunity to witness of the goodness of Jesus? Right. When you're in the classroom and you have study break, do you right. use that opportunity to witness for Jesus to say, you know what? I know Jesus can save. If he can save me, I know he can save you. Yeah. My, my, my. Hey, the Lord isn't blind. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to do better, we have to first learn better Come on. and then begin to teach better. Just right. pass down what I heard. You know, people don't care about what you hear. They want to know what you know. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, mom and daddy said what the Lord can do. Now, what can you say the Lord do? When it, no, when it becomes personal, that's when it becomes effective. And when you have that personal encounter with Jesus, knowing that he is the way maker in your life, he is the one that's turning everything around in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's then that you're able to witness to somebody else, and it'll be credible. It'll be convincing, which should lead to a conversion. Don't Amen. Shall we stand? Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Seek the opportunity yeah. to help meet the need of someone that's incapable of meeting their need. Hey Amen. We thank God for this day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, 2014, what are you willing to do? Are you willing to be that yeah. living sacrifice with that consecrated heart and that dedicated lifestyle? Lord, for you I live and for you I die. For me to live as Christ and to die as King. Yeah. Are you willing for that sacrifice? Do it all. I'm still standing. 
Through it all, I'm still going. Not of my own ability, but because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. This is my prayer. for your attendance this morning. I know personally my day wouldn't be the same without your participation. Thank my brother Shedrick for that message. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you. God, the Bible says that God is working. He's working. He's working. And what should we be doing? How can we sit around idle if he's working? He's working. Uh, he who has started a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God's working. He's working. I'm evidence that he's working. <laughs> he's working. And the question is, are we going to stay working? Mm -hmm. That's the law. Yeah. And ours is not an eight-hour-a-day job. Mm -hmm. and off on Saturdays and Sundays. Mm -hmm. Ours is 24-7. Mm -hmm. huh? 365 days a year. Of manifesting the grace of God in our lives. That others might see him and be attracted to him. So we all stand? Let's go. Amen. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with the seed and joy. Yes. Now to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, dominion, majesty, and power. And for now, forever, shall we all sing. Amen.